What are we doing here, Becky? What are we doing here? That hole you notice in your heart, that's because your Steve is gone. That gaping hole you may have noticed in the concrete steps out front, that's because our Steve is gone. That north door that doesn't automatically open, that's because Steve is gone. I marveled at his abilities, as I know many did, the fuel oil tank that we discovered buried over here. Is there fuel left in it for the old boiler? Well, open it up, Steve did, and stick a stick down, see how high it rose on that stick, took a measurement, and the measurement of the tank with the stake in the ground, and here we have about so many gallons of this left. So here's what we need to do. Or removing the graffiti at the school, Steve, I found this graffiti remover. It's supposed to be great. Okay, so I ordered it in, looked at it, he did, and I don't think that's gonna work. Sure enough. I find no shame in admitting that so much of what he was able to do is beyond my comprehension but not in itself incomprehensible. It's beyond my current ability to understand, but that doesn't mean that it can't be understood. They were mysteries to me, not to Steve. He was on his way to repair the north door. That automatic opener, which had already gone out, and we had to spend almost $2,000 on to replace, and again, it had gone out. No, Father, I can, I can get this part. It'll be stronger. It'll work better. It'll last longer if we do it this way. Of all people, Steve, can you make any sense of it? Neither can I. It's a mystery to me. But here's a try. Roman Catholics, like true scientists, have a deep instinct to begin not with an idea, but with concrete reality, albeit a different dimension of reality than dealt with by the hard sciences. Steve's instinct ran in this way, at both levels. Kyle, this was behind that letter that surprised you when you said, I'm through with basketball, and wondered how dad would respond, who had coached you and worked with you for so long. I mean, his response was consistent with how he saw things, how he understood things. Playing basketball is a legitimate activity consistent with human nature, but it's not the only activity that's legitimate or consistent with human nature. So he wanted you to be happy, and he wrote it in that way. But if you had said, Dad, I am through with homework, or I'll have no more of this morality, his response would have been quite different, don't you think? His response corresponded to the nature of the human person, the underlying reality. Attitude is everything, he was known to say and believe. That's not optimism. Optimism has to do with optics, rose-colored lenses, how we see things. No, he saw things as they are and conformed himself to reality. Justin, that's what is behind, I believe, the story you shared, I think it was you, your voice of testing food on that miserable day, I presume, for your wedding, 
reception, right? You and Steve and others, and just waiting for him after that long, long day to say something negative. And you get home and he says, what? That was a good day. Well, attitude is everything, not optics, not rose-colored lenses. What was that day about? It was about his daughter and his soon-to-be son-in-law. And in light of that, I'll bear all things happily. So let's see what the concrete evidence suggests. How many here, how many of you would have been ready to meet your maker without warning as you drove down 6th Street last week on a very ordinary afternoon? Anyone? Even a few? Is there anything to indicate the same unpreparedness was true of Steve? On the very night before he died, he spoke with our youth group. Becky had said, hey, do you want to go over what you're going to say with me? And he said, no, I'll trust in the Holy Spirit. And what did he do? Well, he brought with him his NFL memorabilia. And beginning with that prize football intercepted from Joe Montana and other things that he could display to our high schoolers, taking them out, showing them one by one. And the last thing he pulled out was the crucifix. And he said, this is the last thing I see every time I leave the house and the first thing I see every time I come home. As cool as all this other stuff is, nothing is worth more than this crucifix. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe Jesus is real? He asked the kids. Because I do. And he wants to have a relationship with you. This relationship is worth more than all the successes I have had. Building this relationship is the most important thing you'll ever do. Hey. Is there any indication he was unprepared? And as you just did a test in your heart, chances are that if it wasn't Steve, someone far less prepared would have been in line to stop that car. Some die that others might live. Now, I can hear rejoinder forming in some of your hearts. He doesn't know that with any certainty. To which I would say we agree, it's a mystery. Although I'm unaware of any evidence to the contrary, and I'm inclined where you say chance accident to see God's providential mystery. Was it by chance that one of our own parishioners, a nurse, stepped out of AutoZone at the very moment Steve's truck was struck and was the first one to him, taking his pulse, trembling with fear, praying with him and for him, as she told me on Sunday, with tears. Providence, mystery, limitations of our ability to see. 
without a doubt, we're confronted with the mystery of good and evil and our capacity to choose freely. For the same power that was terribly misused to plow into Steve and end his life is the same power Steve bent towards the good, enriching as many lives as he could. From his marriage, which is a special type of friendship formed by the substance of what is shared as strong and as valuable as what husband and wife hold in common, whether they're huddled together here, as Steve and Becky often were following the readings on someone's phone, or shoveling snow together that others might safely attend. God was the substance of their bond, and he blessed their bond and their family accordingly. Steve bent his power to choose towards the good, from his marriage to his family, to his life here and in the larger community. I'll I'll never forget Steve and Becky bringing people mentally handicapped to church with them. That's a sure sign of the Christian genius, which doesn't simply share something with others, money, food, or service, but shares one's own life, seeing them as Christ, as his and their own brother or sister. To cancel the driver's capacity to choose necessarily means canceling Steve's too. Now, I know sometimes, I think, Catholics are criticized for what is described as a preoccupation with sin. But good and evil, sin and forgiveness, grace and truth have to do with our capacity to choose, with wrongdoing and setting things right, and by extension, heaven, which was strangely described in our gospel as eating and drinking at Jesus' table in his kingdom and sitting on thrones judging. How appealing. Eating and drinking, okay, but sitting on thrones judging? What is this, like 4-H? Is it a spelling bee for all eternity? Probably no pillow on those thrones, just sitting on a hard surface forever. No wonder people are flocking to Christianity nowadays. Caitlin, you've reminded me more than once of my sister. So I have an older brother and a younger sister. She's blonde. I'm not sure if that's relevant. She likes to pretend she's about your age. And, well, she's the youngest. And we all know what that means, right? You all know what that means. You can get away with everything, anything. We know this instinctively. She shared, I, I'm guessing, Becky, she got in trouble with you. Or she got in trouble somehow, more than once, it sounded like. Not severely, but enough to warrant a spanking. And so she and Steve would go to the back room where no one else could see, and they would make sounds as though he was spanking her. For the middle child, there's no such clemency. I feel your pain, Kyle. Now, maybe it was different for you. It sounded like it could have been the case. But for most of us, we know not only did they get away with everything, but The majority of the time, 98, 99% of the time, it's their fault. (laughs) My sister did not have to eat the dog food that we described as a snack. She didn't have to get into the barrel we were planning to fill with sand. It was clearly her fault. Now, there is 
a 1%, 2% chance that at some point she was wronged. Maybe you were wronged, maybe, by one of your brothers. And what's the natural course? I'm going to appeal to the Honorable Dad Steve. I'm going to lay out my case. He did this. He didn't do that. Give me justice, Dad. Set things right. What Jesus describes is a state of being, judging, in which all things are definitively set right. You see, Adam and Eve were given the responsibility to cultivate the earth, to unlock its mysteries, its technology, and to rule according to God's wise and loving designs. But they failed and opened the door to tragedy. In response, God chose a people to be the renewed humanity, a people with whom he could dwell, calling them to reflect his light by the way they lived, by the way they lived out his wise and loving designs, loving God and neighbor. But Adam and Eve's affliction, their fallen condition, affected the Israelites too. They as a people were not light, but darkness. Sin was multiplied and their cities were ruined their nation terrorized, and their survivors exiled, taken captive and imprisoned in a foreign land. Yet it's contrary to the nature of the God who created all that is not to set things right. So a faithful remnant over the centuries waited for him to do what he had almost always promised to do, to act, to set things right, to bring his fair judgment and vindicate all those who held fast to him, which, if God is just, must have something to do with vindicating, raising the dead. For human justice, as you will find, is by its nature partial and incomplete. The whole of creation would not be destroyed, but renewed, and the sea, that symbol of chaos, danger, and death, would be no more. Zion, Jerusalem, the faithful remnant who collaborated with God in this life by serving, by judging, by setting things right, will be definitively brought back from exile when Christ Jesus returns on the last day and shares with them the intimacy of his own table. Ancient ruins will be rebuilt. What is long laid waste will be raised for the priests of the Lord, for those who, like priests, offer the sacrifice of their lives in service. Saving justice will surround them. In place of mourning dress, the black dress you are wearing, the oil of gladness will be given with no sound of weeping or shrieking, with no hurt or harm done on that holy mountain. In Christ Jesus, the exile of mankind from God, who is life and truth and love, has been overcome already and shared with us, which was captured at the beginning of this funeral mass as I sprinkled water on your dads, your brothers, your grandfathers, your sons, your husband's caskets, and that white covering was placed on him, and he was placed in front of that light, corresponding to that event in his life when he was washed in the waters, given the light that was not his own, and given the mission, as we all were when baptized, to serve as Christ served, to set things right, to reach out into the new heaven and new earth, where the wolf and lamb will feed and bring into this life that love and harmony. The omega point, the final goal, the renewed humanity hangs before us on that cross and fortifies us through his mystery in which Steve 
was regularly strengthened for the work God gave him to do and to be the kind of person we're all called to be. Becky, I think you put it best. What are we doing here? Why did this happen? Well, you said, this gives Steve a platform from which to speak. To speak a word I may suggest that likely would not have been so powerful if he would have outlived his poor parents, siblings, and friends. Many have been touched by him. Perhaps quite a few have been inspired today to start a new attitude, realism in its fullest sense, not optimism, is everything. I can so clearly see what I believe, Jamie, you described, receiving the news of Luke's cancer. Steve hopped on the first flight out there. At the airport, he embraced the two of you and wept together. And then said, Steve, Let's get going. There's work to do. I can so clearly see that. Perhaps all of you can too. And perhaps you can hear Steve say, let's have a good cry. And then, let's get going. There's work now only you can do.